To be perfectly honest, I'm not gonna lie. I miss the bubbles. I like the bubbles. I think this main reason I like champagne. I like the bubbles. I miss the bubbles. I am sure all of you like the bubbles and miss the bubbles, but we don't have the bubbles. Anyways, if that red light is to be believed, we are live and welcome to an exciting new episode of Low Key on the We Love Tears Network here on another what, Monday night. This topic we have is because the our cast of crew didn't want to get sued over talking about food stuff yet, but I will push them in that direction. We will get there. Moast Kretika um, is a great, a great video on, on it. And it was really like it. I've been just reading about food stuff. I enjoy it. But we're going to decide that, I guess. So this is going to be, well, up from since it's his topic, I'll introduce him first. It's, it's, uh, I will introduce the person who came up with the topic of the show because I have no idea where he wants to take this thing. Uh, so uh, his name is Vincent. Vincent, you know, this is. You know, want to explain what this topic is then briefly before we in, then introduce, introduce we'll introduce Reinhold. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I thought about just like talking about since I, I like I uh, since I am a writer and stuff. I just like talked about plot twists and how people use them, and sometimes they use them to their detriment, and sometimes how how a, how a good plot twist can make something better, but a bad plot twist can make a good thing terrible. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. All right. And then, um, you know, also flying with you, got Ryan Holm. You know, hopefully he's a little bit refresher coming off the bench from Friday night. A little bit. A little bit. Not not a lot. <laughs> a long weekend. <laughs> How much um, more so I guess tonight we're talking about, oh, I didn't get any sleep hardly this weekend. <laughs> Um, I'm just having a problem sleeping. Like I'm getting like five hours of sleep and then I'm, I'm awake and then I can't go back to sleep. And then halfway through the day, I'm like, God, I really need a nap. So that's where I'm at. But, um, so I guess we're talking about M. Shamalite, Shamalama Ding Dong tonight. I mean, not that technically. We could, we, what a twist. That, he's the, the easiest examples for it to, if we're talking about examples, but. Because he's got like some of he's got like the best example and the worst example. Exactly. Because <laughs> like in my brain, the last thing is like trying to chase what's that the best high? example. Like my brain was like six cents signs. <laughs> <laughs> or the village. Yeah, that's it's true. like he's chasing the high. Mm-hmm. You know, it's because he has such great people, success with the one, he's, want he's trying him. to redo it and. That's what people want from it. And the one time he goes outside that, right? You know, you guys hated on Avatar. Okay. You guys just like hated on it for no reason. Because he couldn't put twists in it. It made it even worse. <laughs> he, um, what was it? The uh, the movie he did. I can't remember the name of the movie now for some reason. It was the one with uh, Bruce Willis. Unbreakable? Um, Unbreakable. Yeah, Unbreakable. That twist was good. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed that twist. That was a good one. But signs in the village, nah, not so much. <laughs> I liked the village. I liked it. I liked that. I enjoyed that movie. But you know, I, although yeah, I will but, give him this, I'll, I'll give him this: signs and village. Those plot twist endings, as bad as they were. We're still better than War of the Worlds, <laughs> <laughs> where the germs kill all the aliens. It was just oh, that was <laughs> massive plot twist. Did not see that oh, one coming. God. Got it with the COVIDs. <laughs> 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 see, like aliens were gonna come down, but we got them. We got them. <laughs> <laughs> we, we hit them up with the two piece of the of the germs and the coughs. Yeah. Anyways, so before we get too long into it, let's define what a plot twist is then for us. Or, you know, for us, for us lowly non-writers. <laughs> so plot twist is a is a moment in the story, usually t- towards the the later half of the narrative, because depending on what the plot twist is, it, it'll affect the narrative going forward. And mm-hmm. it's something that changes the perspective on everything that happened before it. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of different kinds and. A user gonna probably gonna talk about a bunch of them because mm-hmm. because there's so many of them, but the the most common ones that people see are like the Deus Ex Machina plot twists mm-hmm. and then the and then the ones that are like 
heavily foreshadowed that you can see that you can see it coming. Yeah. So, or the uh, uh, Ryan Johnson ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> but just in general, it's, it's usually when something happens and the narrative is flipped on its head. So you'll you'll see it as we talked just talked about. M Night Shyamalan is known for that with all of his movies. You know, The Sixth Sense and that pu- and that twist at the end. You know. Which this movie's been out for a long time, and we're just gonna put it out there. This is, as we're talking about plot twists, there's gonna be a lot of spoilers for a lot yeah, of I'm things. Say, we need to. There's gonna be very careful a here. lot of spoilers for a lot of things. <laughs> Should I just leave that up? <laughs> just, just know this. Is like I want to try to do my best. Yeah, I'll try to do my best when I'm talking about certain. The, the, media, not the trying to hit the moment twist, to try not to try not to give away. Just, right, right. Hey, there was yeah. a plot twist, and this was right. you know. Which, Sorry, thing. I'm trying. I'm gonna try not to right. be too obvious. Well, I'm gonna, okay, like, actually right. spoil a twist. Right. I'll let you know. That's cool. Hey, before we keep going, like uh, this is an uh, inside running gag that's also that's inside uh, our, the, the Discord. But uh, just so you guys all know, my work computer just crashed again. I just watched it. I didn't touch it. I just looked at it and just crashed. <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right, my backup from last night is still running, so <laughs> causing some issues. No, Wait. see, like, yeah, for the last um, year, my computer just crashes, and I just kind of just have dealt with it. But it's progressively <laughs> just getting, getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And um, uh, uh, and it, <laughs> just KJ Singh says, uh, "Use the MacBook, goddamn it! <laughs> I don't wanna. It's too expensive. It's too pretty." It's too pretty. Yeah, God, it's pretty. Let me see. Let me go grab it. This thing's pretty. <laughs> mm. Well, while he's dealing with that, we'll come like, back to that when he too, comes back. It's too <laughs> pretty. It's just too pretty. Okay, guess what? It's freaking gorgeous. It's beautiful. <laughs> the disuse. Yeah, it's charged up, ready to go. Get my name on it too. Like, I'm gonna do the AD on it. Yeah. All right, there. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's hilarious. They just crashed for no reason. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably gonna end up moving into it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't want a Mac, but I also don't want to buy nothing new, so probably just gonna move into it. So, (laughs) so you can you can took the spoiler warnings off right now, and then we'll let you know beforehand. I I will say, all right, so like I. I don't write. I make stories. I, uh, just KJ thinks that it crashed because it's telling you to use the Mac you were given to use. I wasn't given to use. I was given to hold it. As an IT person, I'm, I'm given to hold things. <laughs> it's just there. I'm being used, so I could use it. Mm-hmm. Access. What were you saying? But okay. um, see, so yeah, I don't write stories. I craft. Uh, uh, I help. I get group. I get. I get people together. And we craft stories together, you know, like to share storytelling. And that's one thing I've always wanted to do, but I could never figure out how to get it to go without it seeing a cheesy as hell, right? Or B, because like, um, you know, like I, I'll slip up. There's no way I can hold a plot twist in a DD game or like a like a role playing game session for too much longer, for, for long. <laughs> Unless I do, like, this is what we're doing for like the weekend. It's like a, like a Gen Con. I can do, I probably can hold it for that long, but a long session knowing, like, all right, eventually you guys are going to figure out this is all crap. <laughs> <laughs> I think right, it'd be really cool for the players, or they'll just go like, "I can't believe you just tricked us for the last four, uh, like the last five months. We hate you." <laughs> <laughs> I can see you feeling that that you're you're worried about that, yeah. but I think a well executed plot twist helps a narrative tremendously. Um, as we were talking about, like how that it could be both a positive and a negative, as we already brought up in Night Shyamalan. He was he made a name making movies that have this dramatic twist at the end that changes the entire perspective of of the movie beforehand. Like we said, Six mm-hmm. Sense, Unbreakable, movies along those lines. And then when there are other movies that he tried to do it, and then it didn't make any logical sense. <laughs> so one of the, the it's, it's like he's trying to chase that. So it, I mean, it would almost be a twist in the movie if he had a movie that didn't have a twist at the end. You right, know, subvert expectations that way at that oh. point because he's. I still think he's just writing movies to try to get that that response that he got with his first one. He wants he wants to continue that, and it's just not. 
unless it comes naturally, it's not, you can't force that sort of thing. Right. It's, it's one of those things where, that if you're building a narrative, you, you can't just go, I want this twist to happen and I have to build everything around to get to this twist. Yeah. But I will tell you some of the, the best twists I've ever seen in movies. And I can think of a couple off the top of my head that I've seen in the last couple of days. They're well done because he, you, all the clues are there through the whole movie. You can go back and watch the movie a second time and go, oh, they it was so obvious. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But it's not obvious the first time you see it. And that's when you really get a good good twist at the end. Right. That was one of the, the major points is that a lot of, a lot of times a, a plot twist is is really well executed when, when there's a lot of signs leading up to that twist happening. Mm-hmm. That there's a lot of things that you weren't paying attention to or you didn't see because you didn't think it was important. Like one of the obvious ones is Fight Club. That was yeah. one of the ones I just seen recently. Right? That that twist at the end of that movie is it, once you know it and you're looking for it, mm-hmm. you can start seeing and it, it changes the whole the background. Right. Yeah, it yeah. also changes the whole opinion you have of one specific character. Mm-hmm. Right. The the Marla character. You, you see that movie a completely different way. You see her a completely different way. You watch it a second time, you're gone. Oh, you know, it's it's really well done, and I and I also watched uh, Shutter Island again last night. Mm-hmm. A night yeah. for less. It's another great example. That is another where they tell you through the whole movie what's going on, and you don't mm-hmm. catch it until. Well, no. some people do. I was watching right. somebody react to it, and they kind of like, "Well, is maybe this is going on?" And but I've seen that people do that with Fight Club too, where they kind of guess it at the beginning, but but they question themselves and they talk right. themselves out of it by the time they get to the to the yeah. to the end of it. So that's that's a good sign of a, a good sign of a, a well crafted twist is when it's they're telling you so obviously but you can't you can't grasp it right then it's right. just out it's, of reach. The, the things are set up and sometimes they they do have it set up, but they more use it as a, as a Chekhov's gun, which mm-hmm. um, if you're not a writer or you don't know what that is, is it's when you establish something and if you establish a gun and the first act of the movie, that gun has to be fired by the third act of the movie. That's that's just kind of how the narrative is structured, where if you introduce something, you get to pay off. Okay. So, like, in, in Signs, they have that with, you know, what led to their twist. They have they have the main the, the main culprit of the twist laying around. They purposely put it in, in a location where it to come into play into the narrative. As, and so they set it up. You pull the you pull the trigger so you can see what happens, and that's where you get a very interesting twist of where you set up a Chekhov's gun, but you never pull the trigger. Hmm. Like a, a, I don't remember who the author was, but they established it of the. Let's say there's a scene in a diner, mm-hmm. and the audience knows there's a bomb under the table. So the, the entire conversation between the two people at the table is 10 times more stressful when you know that there's a bomb under the table and you don't know when it's going to go off. And then it, the, it ratchets up your tension because now you know that this thing could happen. And when the twist is it doesn't happen, <laughs> it subverts your expectations of the, the tension of the scene because <laughs> it could also lead you to be something completely different. Because that Chekhov bomb under the table becomes the red herring, not just the Chekhov's gun. Yeah, Chekhov himself wrote an exception to his own rule, right? So he he wrote a play where he actually did have the gun, and it didn't go out. It was like showing how you can violate the, the, the rule if you do it right. Every rule that is ever made in, in any writing um, it can be broken if you do it right correct right if you if you're using it to its full potential right there's some of them that that i feel like are have harder times so like one of the twists that is more commonplace and it's kind of used a lot by writers who write themselves into a corner is the deus ex machina which is technically a plot twist Mm -hmm. with the deus ex machina for if you're a writer is when something 
comes out of nowhere at the end of the story to fix the problem. It's great. So it fixes plot you, holes. Right. So if you're if you're writing yourself into a corner and you're trying to get out, well, well, this character randomly shows up, or they randomly have this thing that we never established they had before. She she had the power inside of her the entire time, the whole time. Yeah. Right. It's one of those things of that plot, that kind of plot twist sucks a lot of the air out of the narrative because mm-hmm. now you've built up all this tension and you didn't build up to this random thing that comes out of nowhere to fix all the problems. Yeah. And that's where like you see you run into a lot of modern c- cinema because they write to sometimes like, well, this will be a cool scene and they'll do something like that. Like, well, the scene is cool. Yeah, but it, it kind of destroys everything that happened before it. Yes, scene was cool in you know in in a vacuum but you kind of destroyed everything else that you're building up i can give a perfect example of that where it's not technically a plot twist but it is a heel turn that wasn't established and i can Uh, think of two of them what's a heel turn first one well the first Uh, one would be game of thrones well a heel turn is uh just to to define our terms as we go through a heel turn is a wrestling is a wrestling definition of what uh, in wrestling there are the good guys are the faces and the bad guys are the heels so a a heel turn is when a face or a good character becomes a bad character okay thank you you, again we go we can go to a game of thrones to see where we have that happen right Mm -hmm. you have the the daenerys character all the way through, getting all the sympathy and built up and stuff like that. And I watched a documentary about this last night, actually. Um, and suddenly, heel turns, right? And then the problem they had is they did not establish it well enough, mainly because writers sometimes forget to take into account the uh, the actor's choices and what the actor is doing and how the actor changes the way the role is by how they're playing it, even if it was written a certain, I mean, it could be written word for word the same way, but if you play it differently, you can change whether a person is liked or disliked. Mm-hmm. Right. So Daenerys, you know, they establish all this stuff with her and then they, then, they, then she changes and it seems to come out of nowhere because it wasn't established well enough. Right. And I was, they were talking about that in a documentary about a character named Cole from uh, Charmed which was a similar thing they did with him where they made him do go through this whole redemption arc, become good. And then for no reason it gets thrown away. Um, And there's, it's, there's nothing behind it. There's nothing that makes any sense about it. Um, And the, and the other one I'm thinking of is the, 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 the turn for, for Anakin Skywalker Mm -hmm. in episode three. Mm-hmm. Where you know you have to get to this point, you know this is going to happen, <laughs> but they don't establish it well enough during this during the movie to make it believable to say, okay, I can see where he where he his how he got here. It makes sense yeah. to me how he how he made how he made this decision and went down this path. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like you know, what well, one of the, it's the badly written. Yeah, one of the worst whoa, whoa. culprits of that. Just need uh, more. Of, he, he needed another hour. Okay. He, just, right, he, he needed he needed more things to be to actually get upset about. Um, and one of the the worst culprits for a for a for a large stretch of time was the Disney animated movies. If you, where when you look at something like Big Hero Six, okay, and the villain who he turns out to be a villain makes no sense why he's the villain. It makes absolutely zero sense. That's a but modern will, movie. I thought you were going to blur it out. I thought you were going to blur no, it out. No, no, no. <laughs> no I would. I, I'm not. I'm not. I would. Let, I told you I'd let you know if you need spoilers. Okay. But yeah, no. It, 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 say, oh, no. The, the 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 heel turn makes no sense. There, his motivations don't add up to what happening what's happened in the narrative. So it's it it became a twist for a twist, right? Yeah, because of how popular Frozen was, yeah, which caused them to have, go through a series of events of creating all these movies that have this thing happen, and it just kind of dies on the vine. Is that why they did that? 
Mm -hmm. Frozen? Yep. What? Yeah. Damn. Because because Frozen was such a big success and because they had their own heel turn in the movie, they they did it for like that and Zootopia and <laughs> Zootopia worked for me. That one worked. <laughs> I can see why it would, but it also does it also feels like there wasn't a lot enough build up for it. It just kind of feels like it came out of left field. I think that's more why it worked for me because like, what? <laughs> I think that one was just like so out of the field, caught everyone off guard, and like kind of made a little sense to me. But like, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe because I, I give children's, I also give like movies aimed for kids a little bit more uh, leeway. <laughs> well, I don't, and <laughs> <laughs> mostly because you know that they've had better villains in the past that. That's true. Yeah. That do villain stuff. Yeah, that's like the Sonic Two movie. Like if you like, I have watched it enough times because uh, because uh, of my child that I've noticed like, that that the because all uh, movies nowadays end with big CGI fight because you need big CGI fight or you know space beam, uh, sky beam. Um, I, uh, it took me a while to notice that the only destruction is happening is the road, the town, and everything else is not touched. Nothing else south is touched. Only the road is blown up and just destroyed. <laughs> I'm just like, huh. I've never noticed it before. It was just one of those things <laughs> like, oh, that's awful. <laughs> yeah, like when, when a narrative is all about when you when you build up to a narrative and your character, when you need a villain and you don't know who your villain is, mm -hmm. it's one of those ways to get around writing a villain up until the end. Mm. It's very much a we need a villain pull ripcord. See, I, I start all my stories with villain first, right? And sometimes people don't do that. Right. They have a they have a story they want to tell, and then they're written into a corner to where they need something. Or if they write it well, hmm. there's a reason for this character to to, to flip. Hmm. <clears throat> so, I know we're talking about you know, we're talking about. Tw plot twist so i don't know if i want to go down this path just yet but maybe when we get later in the show there's a mm -hmm. there's a movie that is beloved by a lot of people but it literally makes zero sense and i <laughs> I, I don't know how much i want to go into it right now as it's not technically a plot twist so <laughs> towards the end we can pull it up and we, <laughs> we can talk about it and see what happens so I, i'm mm. not 100 percent sure what movie it is so i'm i'm intrigued um, I can tell you the name of the movie. Well, that's one. It's Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders? <laughs> Raiders? Raiders? Just, just to, just to tell my, you. It's not my favorite Indiana Jones ones, but like, you know, because Crystal Skull is like, woof, man, that's top notch. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, it, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones makes zero difference to anything that happens in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> he could have not been there, and everything would have happened the same way. Hmm. That is that is very accurate. That's a fair, that's an accurate assessment. Hmm. And when you look at it that way, it's it becomes blatantly obvious. <laughs> yeah, because he brought the pieces to them. He brought every piece they there. Would, he wouldn't have nope. found it. No, they he found it without him. <sighs> Not the other movie. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now you're thinking about it. It's like, huh? He kept he kept it away from him for a little while, but they got it right back. And mm -hmm. then they would have found it. They would have opened up the thing. They all all oh, their spoiler <laughs> alert faces would have melted. Yeah, everything would have happened the exact same way if he'd been not been there. Yep. <laughs> but then it'd just be out in the open. Some kid would have found it though. <laughs> <laughs> Reinhold just leaving like. Bomb, arc of bombs out everywhere. Just leave it. That's how I got lost in the first place. Someone like Ryan Holmes, like, trust me, no one's going to touch this thing. It just walks off. <laughs> but that's how the spirit of destiny ended up in Constantine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. yeah. But another example of the Deus Ex Machina is in gaming, right? Mm -hmm. For Mass Effect 3, mm -hmm. one of the biggest issues with that game. Because Mass Effect, if you don't know, is a series that's a very narrative structured series where all your decisions matter to the point where you can carry your character over from Mass Effect 1 to yeah. 2 to 3. 
Yeah. So what you did in one affects what happens in three. Yeah, terrible gameplay at all. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I get I, I the premise and use of it was was well done in my opinion. So it, it, you could carry it over from yeah. the game to the game. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. And you I, you would wish certain series or structures of games would do something like this. Right. But you can hit the spoiler for this one because I'm just going to go in on this one. Uh, it's just, uh, it's like just... Hard to the paint. Yeah. The end of Mass Effect 3 became this massive issue because a literal god child shows up to Commander Shepard and goes, which one of these three lights do you want to go into? And this will decide the fate of everything. So all your all your choices you've made this entire game come down to three lights you can pick from. And all the ending, the only difference in all the ending is the light cut of the explosion is different. What a twist. Yeah. So the twist <laughs> is they took all your all of your options and all the choices you made and threw them in the trash can. Yeah, just garbage. And man, so the, all that time and investment you had from carrying a character over through three RPGs. Mm-hmm didn't matter with terrible gameplay terrible controls let's be honest controls got better as the as the games went through because the first game had the worst controls it was the worst the worst <laughs> the, 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 the first one had the worst it was like in the resident like, evil uh with the madcast controller yeah and then they were like all right let's not put this terrible car in the game anymore <laughs> <laughs> You can just scan it from space now. You don't have to go on the islands. You don't have to go on them anymore. I should, I yeah. I have to admit, I've never played the game. Good. It's it's very interesting. Uh, narrative. Now that they, after it came out and they realized how bad the ending was, they did eventually like patch it and add different endings for the choices you made. Thankfully, but the the damage is already done <laughs> for a lot of people. But if it wasn't for that, going through it as a series is a very fun experience because it's because your character's op- choices matter throughout. Mm-hmm. Like literally, if you there's an option where you can romance a character in the first game, they don't show up in the second game, but you can choose to not romance anybody. And mm-hmm. in the third game, they show up and you're still in a relationship with them. Okay. In order, the, it's just kind of to show that they that they are willing to carry a narrative over throughout the entire series. Hmm. Hmm. Um, another twist that gets used a lot is the death of a protagonist, where the narrative is focused around one character, and then they die. Or they're removed from the board, and the narrative is switched to somebody else. One of the obvious, one of the more well-known examples is Scream. The first Scream movie was it was all marketed around uh, Reese Witherspoon, mm-hmm. and the narrative is all about her, and then she dies 15 minutes into the movie. Yeah, was it Reese Witherspoon? Who was it? Uh, it was um, E.T. Girl, um, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Like... One of the two. My bad. Yeah. Well, it was focused. There was all focused on her, and then she dies 15 minutes in the movie, mm-hmm. and then everything else has to change because now you've built up your protagonists, and then they're gone. And how now? I'm, how do you I do never, narrative? I never saw the movie advertised that way, like, or sold as that she was the protagonist. Just that that was a poor person in the movie. So I don't know if that's I mean the obvious exactly. the obvious is Game of Thrones. We can go back to that one. Because there's the obvious one to that one. Yeah. And, and because... part of the problems with Game of Thrones too is that it, it's a the books don't have the same problems that a lot of the TV show had because you introduce character choices, you know, acting mm-hmm. choices into some of the things where like Shay, Shay is a good example in the books. She's not loved. She's just a 
you know, her her turning on Tyrion made complete sense in the books. But in the TV show, people started to like her, and she's she, they did some things with her character that wasn't done in the books that made people more endearing, deared to her, and made her think that she was more of a defender and she really liked Tyrion and all that stuff. So when when we're looking at this, we have to you know differentiate between whether it was a book thing or a TV thing. I think. Well, yeah, well, the I TV mean, show also suffered from not having like ten pages of like describing the food. Each scene. So, <laughs> well, I mean, well, there, there's well, it's the, Lord of the Rings, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there's how, how there's many the pages can you dedicate death. to a tree? Hmm? A there's ch- the biggest chapter. death in in Game of Thrones early on. You know, especially if you're watching the show, the 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 red the, wedding. No, no, before that. Oh. Oh, the the first season. Yeah, that one. The one where, because especially in the show, it's mostly built around that character, and then mm-hmm. they're gone. Yeah, but the, the book was kind of the same way. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of because I I remember when the books came out, I was very into the book because I was I've been reading um, Wheel of Time, mm-hmm. and while I'm waiting in between Wheel and Time books, I'm looking for something else, and this one said new book by George R. R. Martin, and it was. On the on the cover saying, you know, Robert Jordan says this is a good book, basically. So I was like, well, if Robert Jordan liked it, I'll give it a shot. And I plowed through that book and I really liked it. And I got to the end and it was like, and there's been several times where I'm reading that book, and I'm just like, wait a minute, what <laughs> did they right. just do? And, and they actually did things in the book. So right. yeah, they, I don't know. It's I don't have the context of the books. I never read the books, so I only know stuff from the TV show. But that that's one of the big examples that a lot of people see is that is that as a when you take care when you kill a main character, you've changed the dynamic of the entire narrative and now you've now you have a twist to your story where mm-hmm. you've built you've invested time and effort into a character and now they're gone. So we got to differentiate a little bit too between main character and one of the um one of the view characters, right? So there's right. there's viewpoint characters where you have you have like several different characters viewpoints that you're reading. If you're reading different, if you're not reading it in third person, you're reading a first person narrative of those people's, right? Um, because sometimes you do have characters where you're following their journey along with other people's journey in the books, and they die. Is that considered a main character or is it the, the main character? I mean, that's kind I of mean, what we have to go through. Well, that's also the. It's more of a. It's when you take the a, a viewpoint character and you you get rid of them. When it's a character that you've basically invested your time and effort into as like a as a main focal point of a narrative, and then they're they're gone. They die in a manner that seems premature to their arc. So if it's not done right, that's the concern, right? Yeah, so this, exactly. I mean, there's been books where I've read where one of the viewpoint characters dies and it's done in such a way that it's so haunting Mm -hmm. because you're, you're witnessing that moment through their eyes and it can be really well done and unexpected and like, Oh my God, you know, but fitting in with what happens or it can just not make any sense at all and feel like it was right. It's pointless. It's pointless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even then that both of those are, they're they're the good and the bad of that kind of twist of a narrative, because when people go to read a story, they expect these are the main characters. Most of them are going to live, depending on the narrative that they're go- looking into. Depending well, on the it, story, it depends how it's things. written, right? It right. depends on written because sometimes you you get a book where it's all written from one person's point of view, and people around him die, but you've got invested in those characters, right? Right, but you're not you're not seeing the world through their it's not not viewpoint characters. Right. So there's still a bit of like shock in that moment, but it's not the same kind of shock. Right. So another, since we're talking about viewpoints and narratives, another kind of plot twist is when you have an unreliable narrator. When the narrator is unreliable and you don't, and the information you're getting leads you to have a twist at the end of it because once all the information is revealed, everything is twist. Which is a, <laughs> uh, it brings me to another great movie with another great twist at the end of it, 
based off of an unreliable narrator, literally, Mm -hmm. and I don't know if I should say the name of the movie, because if somebody hasn't seen it, then it kind of gives part of it away. I know exactly what movie you're talking about, though. <laughs> but Just based on a lot what of people can't watch it. I know anymore. exactly what you mean. Yeah, a lot of people can't watch it anymore because one of the people in the movie is canceled now. So, I, Kevin Spacey. I think, yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I thought you were thinking of a different movie. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, but you know what we're talking about, right? Some... <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I know. I know which one. I know which one you're talking about. I was thinking about the other one with the unreliable narrator because uh, the uh, the pictures. No one need more now. The photos. The photos. The photos. To remind them. Oh, oh that it's uh, well yeah. that yeah, what, but that's that written was, in a okay. way that's supposed to be exactly. Whacked out, but yeah, <laughs> but it, it creates a plot twist. And when when you're when you don't have full information because your because your narrator doesn't give you enough information to really know what's going on, and when a twist happens, it become it comes from the reader getting revealed information that they had no idea was there, because the point of view character doesn't give you the option to see it. But it is there in the background if you're paying attention. Now, when we go back to Deus Mach X, and I, is mm-hmm. is that more about the the way to end the? <clears throat> do you see that as more of a a way to do a twist at the end or solve a problem at the end, as opposed to a MacGuffin, which is a device or an object, or do you think they're kind of intertwined between each other? Uh, I feel like they're they're the they're connected, but I think MacGuffin mm-hmm. is usually used as a driving narrative force of like we're trying to find this MacGuffin, and that yeah. the MacGuffin is the thing they're trying to find. The unobtainium is the thing they're trying to find. I prefer and that's Sith the MacGuffin. Knife. Sith knife. <laughs> okay, hey, or a suitcase in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Got <him>. but, <laughs> but but the, the I feel like that that's more of the MacGuffin compared to uh, the Deus Ex Machina is something that happens unexpectedly towards the end or, or like like they can be intertwined of like the MacGuffin is like oh this magical thing that we don't know what it does and when they get the MacGuffin it solves all their problems that becomes a deus ex machina because you're just written yourself. You basically never established what this thing did. So now you've made it a uh, solve all problems button. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it just, it solves all unsolvable problems. Right. It solved the unsolvable problem. Like, Oh man. Like I, I if I just have this one thing, it'll fix everything. Yeah. And when you get it, it does. The 42 gun, it just shoots 42s everywhere. It fixes everything. <laughs> so so they can be intertwined but they're but I feel like they're not the exact same because I feel like MacGuffins are usually used as the thing to obtain in the narrative like the goal while the while the Deus Ex Machina is the solution at the end of the story you know what I mean so yeah so the Deus Ex Machina could be a MacGuffin it just mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but, necessarily yeah. isn't the Deus Ex Machina. Okay, exactly. That's what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, but like people love MacGuffins. Okay, all right. Here, when you have your player characters, they like searching for the MacGuffin device. They love mm-hmm. adding the MacGuffin device to to their character sheet. And if it's a TV show, MacGuffin makes great toys. Okay, all right. Add all the MacGuffin toys in your in, into like this. You know, thing. I think the. Uh, uh, Vox Machina not having all their MacGuffin devices as toys for, <laughs> for adults. Leave money on the table. Money on the table. Don't forget, McDuffin makes the greatest, one of the greatest memes. Some of the greatest memes. <laughs> uh, Christy's right with you. Christy's right with you. She gets it right as, right as you said Every, it. I prefer McDuffin. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's busy right now. <laughs> Hopefully, very busy. He's busy writing up memes. Yeah, busy somewhere. Photoshopping <laughs> Chris's head on somebody's body. Yeah, busy <laughs> on another part of the internet. <laughs> uh, 
another way to have a plot twist is when you purposely make a non-linear story. <laughs> Abra says, I prefer McMuffin at 6 a.m. after a long night of shit cooking. <laughs> As long as it's not a McGriddle, those things are nasty. I've, I don't even know what one tastes like. <laughs> it uh, tastes like syrupy corn syrup. sausage. <laughs> yeah, it's just bleh. Some days I miss like uh, I just want to go to the McDonald's. <laughs> Take just... that back, right? <laughs> 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 See, this is where we get the conversation going. Harry, Harry <laughs> tries to make we, we promised we weren't going to talk about food tonight, and here we are. Yeah. <laughs> right into sliding it. it in, sliding it in. God, I've been at McDonald's in so long. I probably, I probably can't even hold it down. Take <laughs> like a bite of McGriddle. It's just, it's just <laughs> instant vomit. <laughs> like, like, no. And I, I still eat fast food, you know, but, uh-huh. like, but not McDonald's. Not McDonald's, like. You know, and uh, you know, like I, I used to work at a Burger King, so like, you know, I will only eat Burger Kings I can look at. Okay, they ain't no, they're gonna give you a good, you know, good food from the from that Burger King. But most of them I walk in and go, no, not this one. <laughs> I can feel the energy of this one. They ain't got that. They ain't about when that. I eat, when I eat McDonald's breakfast, it's always a steak, egg, and cheese bagel. Uh, mm-hmm. Just kidding. She says, J- literally just had one today. Delicious. Uh, my breakfast was. Um, Rice. No, it was oatmeal. Okay. <laughs> All right. I had a salad for breakfast today. Thank you. Uh, I had coffee for breakfast. Yeah, I had, co- I had coffee. I had uh, five cups of coffee, black coffee, and oatmeal. <laughs> the five cups of black coffee is so ridiculous. <laughs> 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 Anyway, and then for lunch, I had uh, two chicken five thighs. Boxes. I had five more cups of black coffee. Uh, Earl Grey tea. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Damn it. Earl Grey tea uh, and a bag of cauliflower. And then for uh, dinner, I had the uh, the steak and uh, <laughs> Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah. That was my lunch. It was small steaks. <laughs> Please. Chips and salsa. <laughs> Christy out here joining in. The banana, coffee, and a protein shake. Nice, nice, nice. Good morning. Good morning. So you're so, talking about m- movies that are made in, uh, or stories that are told in, like, specifically out of order. Right. Stuff going back like, to Pulp Fiction. <laughs> exactly. Pulp Fiction is, is a great example of it, where the narrative is purposely told out of order, out of mm-hmm. chronological sequence, in order to give you a different experience. Is that like kind of like some of the stories where the you know you see the act the like the, the sets in the time like a moment of time like it's chaos is going on and the like, actors like you may be wondering how I got here. Is that what you're talking about? No, that, that that's actually like there's actually a different one hmm. for that. Technically, it's because it's a flashback. That mm-hmm. The flashback usually reveals what was happening in the plot. Yeah, but okay. to the chronological order, stuff like, like, um, Pulp Fiction, uh, I believe, isn't Burn After Reading told non non linearly? Mm. Mm, I don't. I don't pay attention to this. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't remember if I saw it. Mm-hmm. Crazy like st- stories that jump back and forth on time travel. So- Drives me nuts. Oh, so here's the deal. So the difference, <laughs> I think, the difference is, is that in a in a narrative story where you're doing, um, like like a Deadpool, where you're telling the story at a certain point and you're going back and saying this is what happened, you're letting the audience know that this section here is happened before, and that's how we get to this point, and this mm-hmm. is, and, and it tells you when it's over, so you know when the current time is, whereas something like a Pulp Fiction. You have to piece it together yourself, hmm. right? And right. you have to think about it. And you, and they don't tell you explicit, explicitly, you know, what's going on and what the orders are. So, um, I think those are, are the kind of the difference between the two. Yeah, because when you the the how you're wondering how I got here is more of this. They're establishing that this is what's going to happen, mm-hmm. and then they're backfilling everything leading up to that moment. It's it's the equivalent of starting with action. That's mm-hmm. basically what a lot of it is. It's the 
here's the pop to get people to read or people mm-hmm. to watch. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to go back in, in exposition and build to this moment. It, it's a thing that happens a lot in comic books. You'll see that things will happen and then it's like two days earlier and then you they backfill everything to where it was. <laughs> because they you need to get the readers in immediately by grabbing their attention with action or something along those lines. Okay. So that's why that kind of thing happens narratively. Hmm. So the non-chronological is very interesting because it allows things that happened in the past to be revealed because now you have a mystery about the story because if you saw it happen at the beginning, it wouldn't be a mystery anymore. So if something yeah, and you also would, wouldn't be invested, right? So they want exactly. to get you like invested in the story real quick and then go, okay, here, here's the slow burn of how we got to this point, as opposed to trying to start off with that in chronological order, 10, 15 minutes in, you're going, yeah, I don't feel anything towards this. I'm going to walk away. You know, you, you, you want something sharp, sh- uh, jarring and sharp right in front to grab the attention. It's like a good headline, <laughs> you know. When you read a newspaper, you see the headline, you get an idea of kind of what they're trying to say, then they go and explain it. And it's kind of the same thing where you're doing a boom and then bring you into the story. Newspaper? Mm-hmm. Yeah, these, these ancient things we used to have with corded <laughs> phones. Uh, so you uh, had a uh, phone uh, on a cord? <laughs> so like a long charger? Something. Like a yeah, long was, charger? You had to like be attached to the wall in order for it to work. Yeah, because like, you were charging your phone. No, you couldn't uncharge it. It wouldn't run without a charge. Oh, because the battery? There's no batteries. There's no batteries in it. (laughs) Blowing my mind right now, man. Blowing my mind. No batteries. (laughs) Sending phantom power through the lines. Weird, man. Oh, so weird. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, so like yeah, newspapers. Oof. That's um so like uh in uh, animorphs because everyone loves animorph books. Um, they always said like uh humans built technology in reverse, where you know they uh books came before computers, but the animorph was like some of the aliens they had computers and they made books. Makes sense. Oh, you seen the meme I shared? You see the meme I shared the other day where it started off with vinyl, then cassettes and then digital and then bluetooth and then this and then vinyl again yeah i think i had people is the vinyl i think i had you blocked hold on uh, (laughs) (laughs) i wouldn't know why yeah no i really think uh, people may go back to vinyl or probably going back to some of like the uh loss so i I don't mean i'll I'll let you have the conversation back here to like but like i really think people will go back to a lot of the lossless like audio things especially because of all like some of the the possible deep fakes because you have to be able to hear the entire all this other audio noise to know that it's not real (laughs) so know if it's real not real (laughs) you need to go back to vacuum tube amps because that would be my dream Because it's like no one's going to make no one. Yeah, you need to hear the hum. You need Mm -hmm. to hear it. And it's just going to be like there's a there's a there's a visceral just something about a tube amp. Mm -hmm. You just don't get with a digital amp. Yeah. And you and recording this way, these ancient methods of recording, because it's it's because faking it is, you know, you can tell if something's you could probably we could probably there's too much. There's so much noise there. It can't fake it correctly. So <laughs> that's my. <laughs> yep, news reports are going to come on vinyl. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no one's going to pay the money to fake that. <laughs> Attention, all ships at sea. We have that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever. When you guys are now listening to this podcast in five years on vinyl, <laughs> get it pressed and shipped out. <laughs> So we'll talk. Everybody got their records players. There's another thing about movies that, so what I find interesting in movies are the movies that leave you at the end of the movie feeling like something really just really weird happened. I don't know how you explain it. So it's an end of a movie, but it's not like an end of a movie that's a twist, hmm. but it's a very existential slap to the face. 
you know, usually to me, it's usually dealing around the, the concept of eternity or something like that. So hmm. well, it feels like that's more philosophical in general, mm-hmm. compared to a, a twist. Usually the narrative is built to that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So it's not, yeah, it's not a twist. Like uh, I was trying to think of this because there's a, there's a movie called silent running that is still, and it's going to be on my on honorable <laughs> mentions. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's one of the, one of those movies when I was a kid and I watched it and the end of it was just haunting. Right. And it's, it's kind of a twist because you expect that the, you expect the Bruce Dane character is going to succeed, but he, he doesn't. Mm-hmm. And it ends in a specific situation that is very, not what you expected to have mm-hmm. happen, but it's not technically a twist either. It's just a, you know, this is how the story ends up. And it really deals with the th- some thoughts that it, it puts some thoughts in my head that I still to this day uh, remember and, and right. kind of work back towards. So, hmm. so there's one was one kind of plot twist that I haven't talked about yet. Is the is usually the most generic one that that happens a lot. It's the refer the reversal of fortune plot twist. Where something with characters at a good moment or it goes bad or vice versa, the one that most people know is um, the Twilight Zone, where the guy breaks his glasses mm. right when he he's when he's alone with all the books and he breaks his glasses. Yeah, awful ending, terrible ending. Right, but that that's a that's technically a plot twist. Yeah, because you've now reversed the fortunes of the main character. Yeah. I probably have time. Yeah, I have, I have time now. It's not fair. It's fine. He got braille. He's got braille. He get braille. <laughs> How would he learn braille when he can't see the books? So I wonder which ones are braille. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor guy. Poor guy. <laughs> but that, those are the ones you'll you'll see the most. A lot, a lot of like the, the reversal of fortune of you know somebody's. The ending is good and it's bad actually, <laughs> or or they're in a really bad spot and it turns out that things turn out okay at the end. Um, a, another example, which is more of a questionable example, um, is the end of The Graduate. Okay. Because if you ever seen the end of The Graduate, it's the way it ends. It's not a happy ending. Who is that? Okay, all right. I don't think mm-hmm. I've seen this one. Yeah, it's a uh, Mrs. Robinson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you trying to seduce Mrs. Robinson? Dustin, yeah, Dustin Hoffman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Ronnie, you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. The Classic ending movie, there. Movie yeah, the the ending is it isn't exactly as it's portrayed. <laughs> so I mean, I can explain it to you here if you want to put the spoiler up. This looks like a very old movie. Do we need to put the spoilers in? I mean, it's up to you. That's fine. That's fine. That's but uh, well, so if we were end... talking about, you know, if we were talking about like the end of Casablanca, I would still want yeah, people to go see that oh, if they haven't yeah. seen it before, yeah. and I don't want to ruin it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You you should watch Casablanca. <laughs> watch it is Casablanca. literally one of the best movies ever made. Yes. Yeah. It, it 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 will ruin a lot of other movies because a lot of movies like wow they did that and you're like oh they copied that from Casablanca. Solid. Now nobody said no about your Casablanca because it's a spoiler and, warning. No one's listening. The funny, <laughs> well, the funny thing too is that they made that movie on the fly. They didn't know how they were going to end it until they cut. They started cutting the movie together. Mm. Mm-hmm. But um, the end of the graduate, uh, Dustin Hoffman's character basically interrupts the love interest's wedding, and they run off together. Mm-hmm. And you see them run off and they get on this bus, and they sit at the back of the bus. They're all happy and smiling, and then. Mm-hmm. It kind of dawns on them what they what they did, and you can see the longer the scene goes on that they actually get like very somber and uncomfortable because they realize they just did something that has basically ruined both of their lives. Uh, Archer copied that scene when he him and the Russian spy. Yeah, yeah. That when they're on the back of the thing and they're celebrating and then. They kind of turned somber. Archer did the exact scene, but with Archer and I can't remember her name. But it's one of those moments of like, oh yeah, he he got the girl, and then as they realize that this isn't 
yeah. really going to work. Yeah, it's the it's the thing where like um, most movies end before they get to that point, right? right? And this is you know like keep going on. It's kind of like um, it's 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 I, I forget what like uh, what video essay I was watching. You could tell like criminals who watch movies like that where they just end. They just when they're getting busted, they have no like credits are supposed to roll. Nah, bro, this is life. Life keeps you don't goofed up. <laughs> Things keep happening. Well, it's kind of interesting how sometimes movies will suspend reality in order to give people a good ending. Like the end of Vacation was not supposed to end the way it ended. <laughs> it was not supposed <laughs> to be a good, happy ending. It was uh, test audiences didn't like it, you know, so they had to go and film a whole bunch of stuff and the whole park scene and everything. Right. Um, Another good example is Little Shop of Horrors has two mm-hmm. endings. Yeah, yes, they do. There's a happy, happy ending, and there's a oh my god, this is horrible ending. Yes, <laughs> and the oh my god, is horrible ending is the ending they wanted to go with first. <laughs> Test original. audience hated it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of suspension of disbelief for that kind of things, and when it comes to the giving people happy endings but usually that's when they that's when their reversal of fortune usually happens is usually a lot of times for the positive because like a character is like at their worst moment and then something happens that fixes it for them or they get treated to something that looks like their things are going to be on the up for them afterwards Hmm. it's usually used more positively as a twist So, yeah, in general, I, I think plot twists are very awesome when mm-hmm. used well. Mm-hmm. And when they're used poorly, it be, it kind of becomes a lead weight to your narrative. Because it, it changes, if you put in a twist that you either don't build up to or you don't plan around, it makes, makes it a lot harder to keep a story going and flowing. Uh, it's a, it's almost insulting to the person who's reading it or watching it, right? So, a great I think a great example of this might be Lost, mm-hmm. where they really didn't end it well. They ended it with a twisting thing that just didn't make anybody happy. Mm-hmm. So, and and I don't think I would ch- I would say that for a Sopranos because I think the Sopranos ending was actually awesome. A lot of people hated it. <laughs> I think it was perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, for some people, that that's a yeah. that's a cliffhanger that they they weren't a fan of, or a twist that they weren't a fan of, which is it, fair. It wasn't a twist though; it was the end of the, the narrative. Yeah, ended at that moment, right? Because you're seeing everything through his point of view. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have a point of view anymore. Show's over. Yeah, yeah. move on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I thought that was very, very philosophical in a way, mm-hmm. um, and a great way to do it. Uh, but yeah, I can see where a lot of people probably weren't expecting that yeah. and were unsatisfied with that. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. So to end off our conversation about it, I, I get, you'll probably want to throw up a spoiler, but I want to ask you guys some of your favorite plot twists in media and just in general, whatever it is. And then I'll, I'll give you an example of one of the things I really enjoy. So which one do you guys want to go with? A, what are your favorite plot twists in narrative? I think I have one. Really? Yeah. Usual suspects? Huh? Mm, yep, have you that's ever seen the usual suspects? <laughs> Not, no. I don't think I have. Okay. Kaiser says here's, here's what you need to do go out to yeah, Netflix or whatever and watch the usual suspects. Yeah. Looks like a movie I would watch, but no, I did not watch this. Such a good movie. Also, Fight Club. You've seen that, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, I did. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's not a twist ending that you liked. I like I like the show, but I'm just saying, like, oh yeah, this is my twist. I, I, I can't. I'm not gonna put it there. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna park my ball in any of those courts. You can't pick a favorite because you can't think of one, or because yeah, you can't, yeah, I can't think choose. of one. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can't think. You don't of think one, Ozymandias yeah. in Watchmen? What I I did that five minutes ago. Was that a was that a plot mm-hmm. twist? Yes, though? yes, it was. Because the entire narrative, because of the narr- the 
point of view character, they mm-hmm. had no idea that he would actually have done it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think they let us This is fucking niece. God damn it. <laughs> you leave a south post alone, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the the one I want to talk about, and this this is definitely spoilers for sure, is a Chainsaw Man. Mm-hmm. So narratively, there's a one of the main characters is uh, this character named Makima, mm-hmm. who is basically running this organization that hunts demons. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> God damn it, niece, son of a bitch. He's a knight, sir. He's a knight. <laughs> And she basically runs the is like the head of the of this demon hunting or or organization, and the entire narrative is based around this character Dingy and his group of people, and she is the leader of all this stuff. And one of the things about the narrative is that she plays to everybody's wants. So Denji wants like a, is attracted to her, so she plays into his attraction to her. You know, Aki Aki is another character who's very strict and rules based, so she's very strict and rules and tells him exactly what he needs to to keep moving forward. And the a long part of the narrative is that she's just around, and in even in the first season, like because uh, I read the manga, but I'll talk about it in the season uh, and. <laughs> There's a point where all the people of this organization start getting hunted down. Like, because in this world, guns are banned because there was a devil that gets his power from people's fear of guns. So guns got banned so nobody could see them so there wouldn't be fear for him. So that demon wouldn't be as powerful. So these people pull out guns and murder everybody. Except for, like, the main characters, which barely get out alive. And do you see the scene where Makima gets gunned down in this train and these guys are trying to escape and then she just stands up like nothing happened and murders them single-handedly. Mm-hmm. So you kind of build through this, this narrative of slowly revealing what she can do. Hmm. And it turns out that she has a pact with the control devil and she basically uses everybody's wants and needs to turn them against themselves to be what she wants. <laughs> and she has a whole diatribe where she's talking about things that happened in history that got erased because nobody wanted to talk about it, which included World War II and all these things that all these things that happened in this universe that mm-hmm. would normally happen in ours, it basically got erased because nobody wanted to talk about it. And because yeah. she's a control devil, she actually just helped people forget Hmm. and it's such an amazing moment where to to kind of show you her absolute control is that the character aki his whole goal is to kill the gun devil Mm -hmm. but he becomes really close with dingy and the character power to the point where he values them as family Hmm. makima wants to kill them both but Aki basically pleads for the power to save them. Hmm. And to do that, she forces him to make a deal with the gun devil. Hmm. The thing that he hated and the thing that he he wanted to be killed the most. She gives him the power by making him agree to have the power of the gun devil. Hmm. And it warps him and twists him and he Dingy ends up having to fight him to to basically kill him to get him out of this. And it's devastating because you can watch as when Aki is fighting Dingy in his head, he sees he's having a snowball fight with his younger brother that was killed by the gun devil. Yeah. And the whole time he thinks he's just playing a game with his brother. So for me, it's very it's that character basically having 
it's seeded throughout the narrative of this character is way stronger and way more powerful than anybody knows. Yeah. But it doesn't come into fruition until you see her go full turn, full heel, basically. Hmm. And then get, allows and forces characters to do things that is antithetical to who they are. Right. To try to deal with the exactly in, in your face threat. Precisely. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, that's just me. You can kill the spoilers if you want. Oh, yeah, I thought that was a very nice discussion about plot twists. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Any advice for uh, the aspiring writers who writing plot tw- if, who wants to put a plot twist in there? Uh, build up to it and don't just. You want to leave hints without it being obvious. So don't. Okay, just don't. Just don't do it. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you say. But it's one of those things. Have, when, right. You have to right. write the narrative in a way that makes the plot twist plausible and believable. So you can't, you have to give enough hints. You, you can't write opposite of the plot twist and have the plot twist make sense at the end. Right. If you establish certain rules or certain things within a narrative and then the plot twist relies upon you going back on any of that, you know, then right. you're failing at that point. People will see through it and have a problem with it. Like it won't be you, you don't you you don't want somehow Palpatine returned. You don't want that. <laughs> you Palpatine, don't want where he's somehow bad. somehow Palpatine returned. You don't want it they to a point where do. you don't. They would yeah, never. They would do never that, do yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. But if you, you, if you're writing a plot twist, you want it to fit into your world. You don't want it to be like these characters are secretly brothers, or this character was secretly the most powerful person all along, without it making sense to the narrative. God, that Palpatine thing when it really hit in the <laughs> second movie possesses Ray and she goes straight dark. That would have hit. <laughs> Okay, that felt like that would feel like they had a plan, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and, but no. <laughs> yeah. and, and another good thing is it, try not to use your plot twist as a way to get out of jail free. You don't, in my opinion, Deus Ex Machina's feel disingenuous because a lot of the times they feel like the reward is just everything's fixed. It's not earned. Yeah. Right, exactly. All right. all right. Well, all right. Well, I, before this episode gets too long on the truth, I figure we need to end it and spike this football right here. Um, <laughs> thank you for everyone who listened to this episode. Um, you've made it this far in the episode. That means you're one of the true fans. And thank, and thank you. You could have been listening to anything else in the world, but you decided to listen to this. And that I thank you. This is a live show recorded at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday night. So come, come watch us. Um, I got to get better at doing these outros. So please watch us on twitch.tv slash we are libertarian. That's R. So the R A R E the letter R. And then you can also find us on YouTube at we are libertarians. Uh, um, so, you know, come watch, watch us live 9 PM Eastern standard time. Come hang out with us or continue to download us and listen to us that way. But we prefer you come out live, hang out with us, you know, throw some chats and have an open discussion. You know, it's free, you know, it's fine. You know, come love us. Um, we're probably going to actually do finish our um, uh, media that shaped us this April. So we're actually getting ready to do our, uh, what is it? The uh, We're going to do our honorable mentions before we get to our number one. So we're next to, that's going to be on our Friday show. And that's not going to be, uh, not this Friday, but what it was, two Fridays from now, right? The seventh, yeah. Yeah, we have two Fridays from now, so not this Friday coming up, but the Friday after that. So we're going to do our long show that that week at uh, that that Friday. So good, and we'll get through all of our honorable mentions, and then after that, we'll spike the football and get, actually and get this thing done um, for all you guys. In the, you know, I don't know if we'll you know you know maybe we'll package it on a playlist once I wrangle the uh, uh, control from uh, on Dear Leader to so I can actually actually get some control from the YouTube channel. So um, so. Uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, you know, have a week. Say goodbye. Hey, everybody, don't be afraid to write.